In this video essay, I will discuss how Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain acts as an interrogation of languages. I will perform a multimodal analysis about how the game explores themes of culture and colonialism as typified by language through its gameplay and narrative. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain is the fifth major installment in the Metal Gear Solid series, developed by Japanese studio Kojima Productions. It was released in 2015 and is the series' final game to be directed by its creator, Hideo Kojima. The Phantom Pain's predecessors helped define the stealth game genre, and this title is no less revolutionary. It is an open-world stealth action game, a rarity in the games industry. The narrative is split into 50 separate missions which the player conducts as the series' protagonist, the legendary mercenary codenamed Snake. Said missions are set throughout two major areas, Soviet occupied Afghanistan and the Angola Zaire border region. During these missions, the player navigates Snake through enemy forces in order to reach a goal. This goal can vary from objects to be stolen, individuals to be kidnapped, or soldiers to be eliminated. Unlike most military shooter games, the Phantom Pain is not about complete offensive dominance of enemies. Instead, there is more emphasis on stealth and tactics, such as sabotage and silent takedowns as well as creative and comical departures from the typical military toolkit, such as hiding in cardboard boxes or using a water pistol to stun enemies. The game also features a base system, wherein the player can build up their own private military company known as Diamond Dogs. This is accomplished by recruiting staff, stealing materials, and funding research, which gives the player access to more weapons and technology to give them an edge when they're out in the field. Now that we've covered the gameplay, we can begin to take a closer look at how it works together with the narrative to say something about culture. The game opens with a quote from Romanian philosopher Emil Cioran's Anathemas and Admirations. It is no nation we inhabit, but a language. Make no mistake, our native tongue is our true fatherland. The Phantom Pain, like most contemporary video games, makes heavy use of speech to help construct its historical and political backdrop. However, it differs in that the game's antagonist, Skullface, attempts to weaponize language. Skullface is the head of Cypher's elite strike unit, his master plan is to spread vocal cord parasites throughout the world. Parasites which infect the vocal cords and kill their host if they speak a certain language. He plans to use a strain of parasite that attacks English specifically, resulting in the global death of English. Having lived in northern Transylvania during World War II, Skullface's Hungarian culture was replaced by occupying forces as he was forced to speak other languages such as English. I was still a child when we were raided by soldiers. Foreign soldiers. Torn from my elders, I was made to speak their language. With each new post, my masters changed, along with the words they made me speak. Words are peculiar. With each change, I changed too. My thoughts, personality, how I saw right and wrong. War changed me, and not only my visage. Words can The experience gave him a hatred for English, and now he associates the language with oppression. He wants to destroy English, and states that Sans lingua franca, the world will be torn aside. And then it shall be free. People will suffer, of course. A phantom pain. In Brian Spitzberg and Gabriel Gagnon's Conceptualizing Intercultural Competence, various developmental models of intercultural acclimation are discussed. One such model is Bennett's stage model of intercultural sensitivity, a chart of sorts which seeks to explain the development of an individual's connection to a culture upon being introduced to it. At first glance, we might assume that Skullface's ideas about English set him in the denial or defense stages, but I would argue he has made it all the way into integration. Being trapped by English made Skullface adopt its ways, becoming a colonial force of his own who wishes to push his will onto the world. In other words, he has taken the very things he hates about English and integrated them into his own behavior, consciously or not. Having been presented with Skullface's experience of oral English, the player is urged to consider the connection between language and imperialism. Skullface's fear that English is a tool of oppression is not a unique one. In Andrew Dalby's Language in Danger, he describes how English has not only been a tool for forced assimilation, but also annihilating entire languages en masse. 
He writes, while the use of English spreads all around us, we are also seeing the rapid disappearance of hundreds, eventually thousands of minority languages. Of course, there are a number of counter arguments to Skullface's idea as well. Julian House made a case for English as a transactional language or a common ground for nations to connect across cultures. She argues, using English as a lingua franca for instrumental purposes does not necessarily displace national or local languages as they are used for different purposes. For example, diamond dogs would not function without English because every member eventually comes to speak it, but they do not fight to spread it. Neither blanket statement about English as a positive or negative force should be accepted unquestioningly. Because of Skullface's plan with the vocal cord parasites, language in The Phantom Pain takes on a function entirely outside of its role of simply constructing a narrative. It becomes a weapon, one that the player can see the effects of. Skullface's attacks using the vocal cord parasites start on a small scale. First, the only hints are the Russian and Pashto-speaking combatants in Afghanistan who complain of a mysterious sickness. Later, the player can find soldiers discussing Afrikaans and Kikongo strains found in Central Africa as well. However, as the game progresses, the influence of Skullface's attacks on language is emphasized by the game's procedural mode. In Jason Horeliak's On the Procedural Mode, he describes it as the mode of representation illustrated via in-game interaction. One of the examples he gives of procedural rhetoric is found in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, where the only way to deal with outsiders and terrorists in the game is with violence. There is no way to talk situations over, it's just kill or be killed. He writes, The procedural argument here, even if unintentional, is that terrorists are logical violent beings who must be destroyed, full stop. Through playing the game, the player is exposed to the argument that terrorists are either incapable or unworthy of discourse. The Phantom Pain makes use of procedural mode to inform us of the power of language, doing so with a particular event near the story's climax. The staff which the player recruits to Diamond Dogs over the course of the game all speak different languages, due to the fact that the volunteers and recruits come from all over Afghanistan and Central Africa. This includes natives to the areas, but also interlopers from other nations such as the Soviet Union, South Africa, and Europe. The languages each member speak are listed as part of their profiles, and as time goes on they actually learn the languages of those they work with. However, most players won't pay much attention to this. It all comes to a head when Diamond Dogs is infected by an infestation of the vocal cord parasites. It is up to the player to deduce which language is being targeted by the parasites. The infected language turns out to be Kikongo, a language that was introduced to Diamond Dogs by Snake's Ventures in Africa. This development greatly influences the player's view of Kikongo-speaking staff. For example, they might quarantine the few Kikongo speakers who are infected, or they might quarantine every single one of the Kikongo speakers on staff, regardless of their status. They might gain an aversion to recruiting Kikongo speakers, and only recruit soldiers from Afghanistan instead. Through this process, the procedural mode teaches the player how to discriminate against a language, how to suppress a language, just as Skullface fears. I believe that this was an intentional decision. To make matters worse, Snake is later forced to personally execute many of the infected staff after the parasites begin to mutate out of control. This includes killing potentially skilled and high-ranking soldiers, which harms the progress of Diamond Dog. Before knowing of this parasite infestation, the player would have little thought for what languages their staff spoke, greatly subverting their knowledge of the game up to this point. Ironically, the details I've discussed so far would be difficult, if not impossible, to parse without the use of a lingua franca such as English. While The Phantom Pain was developed by a Japanese company and directed by a Japanese individual, much of its production was in English. An example of this is Snake's voice and facial capture actor, Kiefer Sutherland, who is a British-born Canadian, and Skullface's actor, James Horan, who is an American. Most of the game's cast only spoke English, meaning their voices had to be dubbed for the Japanese release. Think about that. A game that was made in Japan needed to be localized for Japan. This situation is somewhat intentional, as Hideo Kojima has often voiced his love for American culture, especially American cinema, and its influence can easily be seen throughout all of his work. The game itself can be seen as an interrogation of English, and its role as a lingua franca. The video games industry, like many industries, is dominated by English. Even major companies such as Kojima Productions must bend to the rules of the English world one way or another. Otherwise, they won't be able to reach the large audience they intend to. It's a world where if you want to be heard, you need to be speaking the correct language first. Metagru Solid V, The Phantom Pain, discusses the concept of cultures as typified by language. It also interrogates the role of English as a colonial tool of oppression and explores the power and influence of language via its procedural mode. It's a fantastic game and I would urge you all to check it out.
Thank you for watching.